Hello, my name is Dylan and I'm from the global search team at GitLab and I'm going to walk you through some performance improvements we've been making to our Elastic Search integration recently. In particular, this merge request I have open is about moving issues to a new dedicated Elastic Search index. And the point of this um, at present is that all of our different document types we store in Elasticsearch from GitLab are stored in a single index today. And this means that that index becomes very large and searches are potentially less performant than they could be for large indexes. So what does that all mean? Let me give you a quick demo of what that means. So when you perform a search in GitLab today, you'll see these many different tabs here. And all of these different tabs are searching for different document types. Um, when I have the performance bar open, and I'll leave a link in the description for how to use the performance bar in your local GitLab instance, you can see that these searches are querying Elasticsearch in an index called GitLab development, or it'll be GitLab production in your production instance. And if I go look at issues, I will still be querying, I'll be now querying GitLab development issues on this um, as we've migrated those to a new index. But merge requests, milestones, comments, Etc. they're still using the same monolithic GitLab development index that all the other document types use. In future, we're planning on moving all of the different document types over to be moved into a new index. So this video is going to be quite a technical video explaining how this is working behind the scenes and how to monitor it, etc. It's mainly going to be focused for a GitLab administrator that potentially needs to debug a problem or just wants to understand exactly what's going on for their instance. The main thing to know with this new migration is that it will run automatically when you update your GitLab instance to 13.8. You don't need to do anything. It, the issues will be moved over and uh, the new index will be searched as soon as the issues have finished moving over. So you shouldn't notice any downtime where issue search doesn't work or anything like that. And you don't need to manually trigger anything. So this video is really only useful if something goes wrong or you just really wanna look at the low level details. Um, the, the main thing, if you want to understand what's going on is you can see the migration running through the UI. So I'm gonna, um, since I've got an instance here that is fully migrated already, I'm going to just run a few commands to um, basically revert the index to an old state as though the issues hadn't been migrated so that I can trigger the migration workflow. You, again, don't need to do any of this stuff. This is just me manually hacking at GitLab to get it into a state that I can demo um, the migrations running. Okay, we're back and I have the index in a state now where the issues are pre-migration. They're in the monolithic index, so I can demo what it will look like while the migration's running. Like I said, this is fully automated and you don't need to do anything else to trigger this. The migration will actually run every half hour. And then once it detects that the issue migration needs to be run, then it'll actually requeue itself every minute until it's done to get the process done slightly quicker. But ordinarily the migrations just check it to see if there is any new migrations every 30 minutes. Since that won't happen for another 20 minutes, I'm going to manually trigger that uh, here should not do this. You should just wait for it to trigger on 30 minutes. But once the migration has started, you will see in some interesting things in the logs and in the UI. So let me go first over to the admin section of GitLab under the advanced search settings under general. We should see now there are pending advanced search migrations indexing must remain paused until the migrations are completed. Because we're moving data across in the Elasticsearch index, uh, it's much safer for us to pause indexing so that we don't have to correct or consolidate any updates that happen during the time we we're moving the data across. But this indicator will appear and indexing will be automatically unpaused for you when the indexing or when the migration is done. Depending on the size, the number of shards you have and, and the size of your index, this uh, probably will take you know less than a few hours for our large gitlab.com production index. It only took about four hours, I believe. And that is going to be dramatically smaller for much smaller indices. It requeues itself and does one Elasticsearch shard at a time. So depending on how many shards you have will change how long it takes as well. And we have 120 in gitlab.com, but each shard was itself taking roughly around about a minute. So 
adding another minute to that was taking a few hours. Okay, the, the next useful things to see here are the logs. So I have open the Elasticsearch log and the Sidekick log here below. These are the two most important logs for debugging pretty much anything to do with the Elasticsearch integration. And I'll leave a link in the description of this video to how, for the documentation on how to look at those logs. But mainly you can see here that the migrate issues to separate index migration started and it's executing the migration. It says setting migration state to slice zero and then it says setting migration state to slice one and it should start incrementing that slice number each time and I have five slices so as uh, five shards that then get done as re-index tasks in five different slices and so that should take about five minutes for that to get done. While that's running I can also see there has been a newly created GitLab development issues index and documents are going into that now. That index will be the index we use for searching after the migration has finished. So again, I can refresh this UI over here to see migration probably has not finished yet. There are, so it's not finished. And if I perform a search from the UI during this time, again, I will see that it is searching GitLab development, not GitLab development issues or GitLab production issues. In the case of a production instance, that tells me that the migration is still ongoing. Check again. We've made some more progress. Checking to see if the migration is complete. It says it's expecting 7,197, but it's only got 7,005. So um, there's still more to be migrated there. We're only on slice three, so two more slices should cover off those until this is done. One thing that may be useful to share at this point in time, we learnt on our production instance, which is again, much larger than most, and probably you won't run into this problem, that there is a timeout set for Elasticsearch requests. And if you set it to zero here in the admin UI, as we had done, it defaults to a system timeout, which in our case was 60 seconds. And some of the re-indexing steps, the slices were taking slightly longer than 60 seconds. So we actually had to bump this request timeout um, in our case, we could have bumped it to 100 seconds and that probably would have been fine. I believe we did end up bumping it to 300 seconds just to be extra safe. So if you happen to run out, run into the situation we ran into, which is where the logging was saying execution expired, which was a timeout error coming from our Elasticsearch client, uh, you can bump this request timeout. You can do that in the middle of the migration running or before the migration starts, if you're really, you really expect you'll run into this it should not matter. And um, if you don't see any errors about execution expired, then you don't need to worry about this client request timeout there. The default setting should be fine. The logs here are still showing it's not completed. We've just finished slice four by the look of things. And should be one more minute before it triggers slice five to run. And I'll just perform a search again here to see that it's still using the old monolithic index. It is. You can see that when we load these pages, actually, it does request the GitLab development migrations. Have a look in that index. Uh, that's another index worth noting. Right now, that index contains three documents and we could look at those three documents. These correspond to the three different migrations we've added for Elasticsearch integration since we started uh, this migrations project. And if we looked at the third migration in there, we would see that it was marked as incomplete or now based on these logs, actually we can see that it was completed true. So that should be done. And if I go back to search here again, I will have searched GitLab development issues. So this is telling me that the migration has now completed and we are searching the new issues index. And if we go refresh that again, I just wanted to check something else. Interest this, this as I expected, we, we actually don't need to query the migrations index every single time we do a search for issues because we cache that result um, as it's 
a performance gain to not be querying that index every time to check if the issues have finished migrating. Now, the other thing we should see if we refresh the admin panel here is that the pausing has been unpaused. So everything should be completely seamless from this perspective. We uh, can check the logs, see anything else interesting has happened there. You'll probably see after that's run, every 30 minutes, the migration worker will run again. And this is pretty standard. This is all you'll always see in your logs. Basically, it just says no migration available. And this is uh, good news. That just basically means all the migrations have been completed. Something to know about in the event of failure, I mentioned earlier that you might have a timeout on just one of the slices while it's doing the re-indexing. If any failures like that occur, network request to Elasticsearch for whatever reason fail, the migration will retry itself up to 30 times. And you can see that in the logs when it's doing that retries, it should be fine if you have an intermittent failure, it should recover from that. Under the worst case scenario, the migration fails 30 times in a row and the migration is marked as halted. And this is also perfectly fine. You just want to see a performance gain from the new issues migration. You will just, everything will revert back to how it was behaving before we added this migration. So in the event that this times out multiple times, 30 times, the migration eventually halts. You'll see that in the log. You'll go back to the admin UI. You'll actually see that indexing is unpaused as you would like. Everything will go back to normal, but there'll be a message on this page mentioning that the last migration was halted and failed. In a future um, change that hopefully will make it into 13.8, we'll add a button to retry that last halted migration. But again, in the worst case scenario, that even if this migration fails and it's halted, everything in GitLab will behave as normal until you have the ability to retry that failed migration later. And then that will be when you get the performance benefits of searching this new index. Since this is just a performance change, it is not a big deal if it fails in your instance and stays failed. Now, aside from that, there is one other op option you have in the event this fails and you really want to run this and the main way in GitLab always to just reset everything in your Elasticsearch index and re-index everything from scratch is to run the rake task GitLab Elastic Index. If you run this rake task, it will delete your Elasticsearch index and tell GitLab to take every document from the database and re-index all of those into Elasticsearch. And for a large GitLab installation, this will take a very long time. So you probably don't want to run this unless you really need to. Um, the, the task will start with the new issues index. So any new installations of GitLab adding the Elasticsearch integration won't actually run this migration. They'll just start with having the two separate indices from scratch. So that's kind of a more efficient way for us to deal with migrations in Elasticsearch is that it just starts with them all having run. You don't need to copy them into one index and then move them all over to a new index. They'll all just be put into the correct index from the start. So if you do run this rake task, don't be concerned that it just says all migrations are completed because that is the correct thing to see. All the migrations will just start out as completed and all the documents will be going into the correct indices at that point in time. Okay. I hope this video was helpful to you and thank you for watching.